Our next speaker is from Australia. Brand futurist, working in the area of customer experience, innovative technology, and digital disruption. He assists growing companies to become market leaders through creative brand strategy, brand experience, and digital solutions across multiple platforms. He is passionate about future-proofing brands, from startups, to corporates, helping them engage with an ever-changing market of consumers. He writes for a number of publications including Sydney Morning Herald, on the subject of brand strategy, and has been, the brand experience expert for Kashi's Business Builders, a national business TV show, which airs to an audience of 3 million and, a weekly blog which is sent to over 1 lakh small businesses across Australia. He is also an international keynote speaker, regularly speaking at events across Australia, Asia and the US, the National President of Professional Speakers Australia and the Chief Strategy Officer at Salted Stone, a global award-winning digital marketing agency of over 70 with offices in Sydney, Perth, Cebu, Louisiana and Dublin. Please welcome Mr. Tony Aids, brand futurist, from Australia, speaking on the topic, how to adapt to consumer behavior, and new technologies, while maintaining a strong customer focus. Over to you, Tony. Hi, everybody. Great to be here for the Global Customer Engagement Forum and Awards and to be able to share with you uh, some of uh, the stuff I've been working on and hopefully you'll find interesting too if I go ahead and uh, just share my screen to get us started. So there's a, a bunch of things that we're going to be talking about, but in essence, it's around the adaptability in this in this kind of world we live in of uncertainty right now. So that's the title of the next 30 minutes that I'm going to share with you of some of the stuff that uh, I've been working on. My name's Tony Eads. For those of you that uh, don't know me, I um, have spoken at uh, this event uh, once or twice and actually live in, in Mumbai when we actually were able to fly around the world. A um, couple of my, uh, my tags there if you'd like to uh, follow me on Twitter or indeed uh, please connect with me on LinkedIn. So besides uh, quite a few things that I do, I'm, I'm actually the Chief Strategy Officer and Brand Futurist for Sorted Stone, which is a global uh, marketing agency. I also speak like this at many events around, uh, around the world. Uh, when one can travel, I do. Um, I'm also a CSP, a certified speaking professional, and, um, and I do a, a fair amount of commentary um, on TV and radio across Australia, hence my accent. I'm based out of Sydney. Uh, in, in New South Wales, which is in Australia. So what a crazy world we've kind of lived in uh, over the last kind of 12 months and still continue to live in, in in a lot of parts of the world. I think we're kind of lucky here a little bit in Australia that uh, we're protected from some of this, but I know and feel for uh, everybody um, around the world that are still going through, you know, the pandemic and coping with the pandemic. But that's kind of given us this, this push towards having a new plan, a new marketing plan or playbook as we like to call it, where we're actually going to be, you know, looking at how we do things differently. What has this pandemic done in terms of changing the way we think, and more importantly, as way the way our consumers think today? Uh, KPMG did a, a whole survey just recently at the back end of last year, and this is some of the key takeaways that we found. Ninety-eight percent of customers are concerned about their personal data, which is an interesting kind of. Uh, problem to have because a lot of people also want to have the convenience of being able to um, have the likes of Google tell them what they want to do next. So if we want to protect data over here, but we want the convenience of, of us understanding what you want next and being able to give your information across, then that makes it really, really difficult. 90% uh, of customers are willing to pay more for ethical retailers. So brands are becoming a lot more, and we're going to share some of that today, a lot more connected with the consumer, a lot more connected with what's happening in their environment. Um, and one of the big takeaways for me on the right-hand side there is personalization is the strongest pillar in driving customer loyalty in 19 of the 27 markets that they looked at um, across uh, six different major markets. So there's, there's kind of this drive more so than ever before to, to take away the ability for us to have a one-to-many experience and have a very, very personalized one-to-one -one kind of experience. And a lot of this is also driven by the buyer journey removing this friction, taking the friction out. We've talked about this a, a, a few times and certainly been talking about this pre-pandemic is that people, people want to remove the friction. They want to easily be able to go through their buyer journey. So whether they're a first touch point when they're coming into your brand, whether it be a website or a social engagement, right the way through to when they're dealing with sales and then afterwards 
you know, customer satisfaction and what we call the delight process is how can we remove the friction? Because that's the way things need to be frictionless and moving them away from having too much friction. If you have too much friction, then customer experience suffers. We have this misalignment happening between siloed departments, our sales teams and our marketing teams and our customer service teams are all kind of misaligned because they're working independently of each other. And therefore, 74% of people switch brands if they find that process is just too difficult. They want to have a nice, simple, simplified and streamlined process, whichever department they're dealing with. And over 50% of those customers are stopping buying from a business because they have just that one, just one single bad experience, which is really frightening because of one slip up and we lose them. But buyers are tired of businesses that are being unavailable or too slow to respond when it matters. So we've become this kind of fast to market, speed to market type, type of delivery to give us the best um, of, uh, of what people want to see. Uh, the founders of HubSpot have also said that buyers are human to survive and thrive in this new normal. Businesses need to deliver a purchase experience now that matches the customer's new normal and not their old normal. I think it's too, too easy for us to kind of bounce back as things do get back to normal in certain parts of the world and just do the same old thing we used to do. But the world has shifted and our consumers' minds have shifted and the way they buy has shifted, we now need to think about doing business a different way in this whole new, nor new normal. And in essence, it's all about delivering that experience I was mentioning before. And now, more importantly than ever before, how you sell matters far more than what you sell, which is interesting because that's the success of brands like, like um, Uber um, and, and Amazon. It's kind of how you sell, how they've streamlined the selling process, how they've removed the friction in the selling process is more importantly than the actual product they sell. Because in a lot of cases, these guys aren't unique in what they sell, but it's just they sell it in so much of a better way that consumers today are, are more aligned to that kind of way of selling. In essence, it's giving us this omni-channel experience. So as a customer, we just want everything kind of flowing together as you can see in this graphic, you know, from our social networks to our word of mouth, if we're online or we go into a bricks and mortar retailer or it's an e-commerce store, wherever we're making a purchase or wherever we're making a transaction, how are we making this seamless? How are we creating this frictionless omni-channel experience for our customers in today's world? And part of this new marketing blueprint or playbook, if you like, that we're, we're kind of designing and, and creating as we sort of come towards the end of, or hopefully the end of what's uh, become a, a really horrific kind of change in how we do things through this pandemic is really focusing, if we're going to grow our businesses, we need to be thinking about them from a customer centric kind of approach. And then wrapping around that, that kind of buyer journey of attracting, engaging and delighting you know, similarly around strangers moving into prospects and then prospects into customers and then customers ultimately in those brand promoters. So this flywheel kind of concept, the faster it springs, the more seamless that the, um, the silos are, the, more, the less friction that we have, then the faster it springs and therefore the growth it generates, the energy that it generates to grow our businesses in the future. And then if we look at how this kind of translates across those, those four key areas of strangers moving into prospects, moving into customers, and then also into brand promoters, it's, it's very much about laying it sort of all out here with the underpinning customer relationship at the bottom. But, you know, we're getting website traffic, we're converting leads and we're qualifying leads in that very, very first part as strangers are coming towards our, our kind of our, our assets, whether that be, you know, social or websites or whatever that might be. We're learning more about our prospects. So we're, we're looking at their, their buyer behavior and we're seeing what they're interested in and giving more of what they want and less of what they don't want. We're connecting quickly. Like people want to, there's, you know, at, at our agency, it's a five minute rule. We've got to be back to people within five minutes of a transaction. If they request information within five minutes, we want to be back to these people. We need to nurture those relationships. So we're nurturing them to be closer to us. We want to educate our prospects. And then as they become customers, we want to continually gather customer feedback. We want to understand from our customers, what's working for you, what's not working for you. How could we do things better? We want to deliver on exceptional service, you know, so people are now going out and telling others about the great experience they're having with our brands and our businesses because uh, we're delivering exceptional service. We're loving our customers and that's what people want to, to experience. 
And then that's going to increase upsells and referrals because more people are going to be, well, you know, I want a part of this. I want to know about this organization that you keep raving on about. And then we continue to engage with those promoters. We continue to, you know, there are advocates, there are the people that are out there. So we constantly engage with them, which is ultimately going to drive that back around again. And more strangers and prospects are going to come back into our funnel. So in essence, we just need to um, continually look at becoming a connected brand. It's about connecting more than ever before as we get into this, you know, post-pandemic or, pro, pro, um, you know, wh whenever that's going to end or this new normal, whatever you want to call it, whatever the buzzwords are, that really we're looking at three key areas. We're looking at a growth stack, some kind of technology growth stack that we need. Buyer behavior, understanding where our buyers are, what they want, when they want it. And then brand engagement, how are we engaging our brand at all touch points across that buyer journey? The, the kind of threshold between brand engagement and buyer behavior is what we call conversational marketing. And so much stuff is happening in conversational marketing now. It's conversational selling, it's conversational marketing, it's, it's this whole conversation piece that we're having through Messenger and through a bunch of other different technologies across that whole journey. Sales enablement comes into play between the buyer behavior and the growth stack or the tech stack because we're really connecting people when they want to speak to our sales team. How are they engaging and getting through quickly to be able to speak to our sales team? And then finally, the marketing automation comes again from the technology and the growth stack through to that brand engagement. How are we getting our content out there, the right message to the right people at the right time on the right channel? And we're doing that through technology, but also understanding how our brand needs to cut through. So it's not just seen in this sea of sameness of everybody saying the same thing. Our brand is different. It's cutting through and reaching the audience, the ideal audience that's our best fit. In doing so, we need to think about what our brand voice is. How has that changed after this craziness of this pandemic? You know, was our voice different before and it's changing now? A lot of times we've done this with brands and they, and they found that they might have been, you know, whispered and softly spoken and now they're becoming more conversational and loud or they were originally conversational and loud and now they're softening their approach and becoming more whispered and softly spoken. Their energy has either gone from chilled and relaxed to switched on and, and in some cases effervescent. Sometimes their sociability has been one-on-one -on -one or in a circle, very, very insular. And now they're becoming more broad community with something to, to say and, and sort of beat the drum about. And their attitude that may have been very, very safe and conventional has kind of moved to unconventional or in fact, the other way that might have been, you know, unconventional. And now through, you know, the pandemic and COVID, et cetera, they've moved to now being more safe and, and conventional because people want to harness that stability in, in a lot of brands today. We definitely need to be continually thinking from a brand perspective about engaging with our audience. This is some, you know, successful examples of how, you know, big brands like Hilton or Nice Low there have actually done this by, you know, using things like newsletters, but then connecting them with other social media or, or, or different um, information resources in, in the first example on the left hand side there. They're allowing people to, to connect with them through, you know, binge watch TV, um, even yoga flow kind of classes. So again, they're very much thinking about the customer and thinking, well, not just about the purchase that they're making, but also the, the whole environment that the, the customers live in. Um, and then the good feel of what American Express are doing with, um, with Hilton um, is obviously giving back to the healthcare heroes. So it's a good feel good story, but again, that's being pushed and used across social. And then the last um, part of that on the right hand side is really, really using real people. So it's getting brand engagement from your existing customers using, um, you know, user share of getting customers to share their experience, user content. It's also, you know, getting those um, influencers and influencer marketing to help. So re real people to actually bring your brand to life is becoming a big thing for the marketing playbook for 2021, because people want to hear from other people. They want to experience what they're experiencing. When you actually come through to like a, a you know, a website today, even websites have transformed. You know, as you can see, this is an example of a website that we built and designed for a, a, um, a company called ResMed, a global company called ResMed. And, and as you can see, it's like very, very simple. For starters, we've got the personalization in that top right area of using like a time token and giving them a bit of a tip you know, at 6.50 at 9, you need a coffee, then maybe try a decaf. 
But the other thing we're doing is thinking about how do we move the friction from a traditional website? If you come here for the first time and you're thinking, well, I could go sleep health or snoring or insomnia, you're like, where do I start? Like most websites, you rely on the navigation for people to be able to select. But in our case, we've got this thing called a solutions finder. We make it simple as you scroll down the page. So straight away, it's kind of asking a conversational question. You're here for what? You're here for a solution for yourself, or maybe you're here for a solution for your partner or a friend or a family member. By changing just the selection there, you actually change the point of view. So if it's now for someone looking for a partner, then the way that you're going to, to kind of communicate the conversation is going to be slightly different than if you're talking personally to them about a solution for themselves. Then the next question is why are you here? So based on the selection and the first criteria, we can then say I'm here to treat what my sleep apnea, improve my sleep, I'm here for snoring, I want to awaken my best, it's just a health thing. And once they select that, they can then click on see my options and then we will pull from the database of the website forward the key pages that they need to go. So it's a very interactive navigation process that allows us to take them off the homepage, which is where most of your bounces happen and actually get them into using the website itself. Once they're on the website, we want to engage with them at that kind of middle point, if you like. So they could be on the site. And again, thinking about logic, they wondered about, okay, so, you know, do I have a sleep issue? Is it health or is it, do I have a potential sleep disorder? So taking the online sleep assessment, answering a series of questions, um, it will actually automatically determine a rating at the end and tell them whether they're low risk, mid risk or high risk of potentially having a, a sleep disorder. So this one gives them engagement. It's a two way engagement instead of downloading and reading an ebook, they can actually interact with this particular tool. Secondly, it tells us because all of the content that you've just filled in or the questions that you've just answered is all captured in the CRM, it's in the database. So as we reach the bottom of the funnel and start to reach out to our sales team, we have all this history of information that everyone has kind of shared with them quite openly because they've been filling this information in by asking, answering questions at different levels um, of the journey as they've gone through. And then when it's time to reach out to somebody and I just want to call somebody, instead of just waiting for a, I don't know, filling a form in and waiting for someone to come back, I have direct access to my sales team's calendar. So I can lock in straight away, any time of the day, tell them who I am, tell them what I want, and straight away, job's done. I've gone through that whole journey all within one sitting, and this could be at seven, eight, nine o'clock at night. I've um, engaged with the website. I've um, filled in the information that I needed, understood that I may have a sleep disorder and then connected with this sales team ready for a meeting to discuss it further. So in essence, this is where things are happening. Most disruptive companies today in this kind of new world that we're living are winning on customer experience. It's the customer experience, which is the differentiating factor between you know, the successful companies and the even the companies that are gonna survive stronger you know, post pandemic than companies that maybe won't. And if we look at the technology stack just for a second, you know, back in 2011, there were 150 companies in the marketing, just the marketing technology landscape. So when you think about technology, it's not just now just marketing, we need sales enablement. We need um, delivery of customer experience like Zendesk and stuff like that. So there's a lot more technology than even just marketing. But if we fast forward now to like um, 2020, look how things have changed. We've gone from 150 back in 2011 to almost 8,000 now in 2020. So it's a massive amount. So And it just looks like craziness in terms of, well, as a company, how do you find, how do you determine the technology that your business is going to invest in that's going to be able to deliver what you need to deliver and as you scale as well friction multiplies the customer experience starts to tank as you can see here customer experience comes down as internal friction goes up so it's very very important for any businesses not only do they decide right now what they need as a technology platform but how how do they work on a technology platform that's built for growth that's built for some case some cases substantial growth and this is where you really need to think about what you're going to do. And some of that is really just mapping out to start with, what does the journey look like for you and your business? So obviously marketing is where we have anonymous visitors coming in that turn into prospects. How does, how does marketing attract these people to come in, you know, from the masses that are out there to become a potential prospect? 
And how does prospects um, then become customers through this sales process? And then how do we become customers into brand promoters? And that's obviously where service comes into play. And operations kind of sits across that because our operations part is really just making sure that all of these things tie together. Um, and in actual fact, when you look at it, you've got operations for marketing, you've got operations for sales, and you've got operations for service. And these operations sit underneath your business while marketing, sales, and service just, just follow through that whole end-to-end, -end, like the 360 customer journey that we're all trying to uh, adhere to. But unfortunately, the customer journey isn't as linear as we can see above. It's more like the one at the bottom there, where people will come and they go, they try ebooks and marketing emails, and they might follow on Twitter, and then they might be visiting your blog or sending you an email, or maybe picking up the phone and giving you a sales call, or you know, watching a podcast or whatever it might be. So to go from anonymous to a promoter is not now a linear process. It's this kind of stop start, kind of quite almost like a roller coaster ride. So we need to be thinking about how do we break that down so that we can actually get our, our heads around this craziness that's uh, that's out there. And then we think about these three things, uh, these uh, levels of things here, content, messaging, which is becoming a, a big trend for 2021 more so, and it's been driving it, but obviously messaging is a huge thing. Automation, how can we automate some of this crazy journey? So we're not constantly thinking we need to send an email here and we need to create a landing page at this point. How do we report on all of this so that we really know what's working, when it's working, and how does that drive the right data, clean data, that we can actually be looking at the right and relevant data to make those decisions that we need to make. We can be using a whole bunch of technology to do that. As you can see here, you know, again, you know, trying to work down that 8,000 op op options, if you like, from a marketing perspective, but then adding it across this whole area here, you've got everything from Salesforce from a data kind of capture place drift from a kind of investment and a live chat kind of setup. You've got Unbounce, which can be used for content. Automation can be anything from Marketo with connections from Zapier and um, Zendesk and all those kind of things. And then reporting across Google Analytics. So there's a bunch of stuff that all kind of come together just to, and that's just a few of them to try and give you that, that kind of 360 view of what you need. But in essence, we want to automate as much as possible. We want to bring it all together. <clears throat> and one of those options is, is HubSpot. I mean, HubSpot have created and just released only last week their operations automation or operations hub. So in essence, the, the growth stack of technology that they have now includes marketing automation uh, for all of your marketing, sales automation, which is your sales team then taking all this, the data from that, service automation about how you service the customers you have, and then underpinning operations on how you actually operate and grow your business across that. So now last, you can optimize buyer experience at scale. And the important thing by having everything in kind of one spot is that all of that information, all of that data is clean because it's passing from one hub to another, all under the same hood. So you're not looking for integrations to connect the bridge and connect the dots together. You can then build fantastic workflows like this that go across the whole buyer journey. So a workflow can take a customer from the top to the middle to the bottom. It can take them sideways. It can go deeper. Um, it can go all over. So this automation piece then starts to layer up workflow after workflow after workflow to really deliver an experience, which is really what customers are after today. And all of that's delivered by you know, a fantastic set of, of technology that really helps you automate the process and makes it easy. Even your website itself can be hosted on this one big platform. So it really makes it useful that everything's in one spot. People are all coming in together. They're all logging in and they can all see the data transferring from marketing to sales from your website into the whole process. And then operations is just cleaning that data up as it goes through. And then outside of that, there's an, there's an app marketplace, which is then driving anything extra into it. So if you need, you know, Zoom connections and, and, and um, extra, you know, uh, ability to do extra things outside apps that, that HubSpot maybe or the technology piece doesn't do, you can add to the ecosystem, connecting outside with, with bridges and API connections that really make life just that much easier and more customized to suit your particular business. So Zoom is where we've been at. Zoom has actually helped us move technology onto the next degree. We've all got used to these little small windows, but what it has done is the technophobes that, that really didn't wanna use technology 
uh, some of the old school have, have have to use technology. We've had to all move forward in a, at a lightning speed because of uh, the pandemic and how we've all become a lot more remote than we have before. But what that's done is actually move technology forward as well. So now, for example, we're moving into these 3D avatar generating things, even though that uh, that uh, version that I did on the right hand side of me looks uh, rather spooky. Uh, we've just got to get past this, but kind of similar to, to me, but uh, we're coming into these virtual spaces like uh, Spatial here is creating, you can generate um, 3D avatars of yourself and your team and then create these workplaces where you all come together and you can all make it kind of happen um, in one place. So, I mean, these things are becoming really, really exciting. The other thing that's becoming exciting is obviously being able to have um, these, these wonderful digital assistants. This is one for the company ResMed that I showed you earlier on, where you know Dawn will, will kind of sit there until we kind of generate her and get her up, awakening her. And then she will actually become a conversational digital assistant. So chatbots, instead of a chatbot where we're typing stuff in, we can now have a voice connection with a digital assistant like Dawn, where she will greet us, we will talk. She doesn't look as spooky as that uh, avatar that I showed you just before of myself. But at the end of it, you have the option to communicate with Dawn either by typing into your computer or holding down the space bar and having a conversation with with dawn and then she will actually answer your questions and if you test her out you can try her out um, you, you'll find that that conversation is actually quite frictionless so this is the future this is this is really where we're moving towards these more visual um, animated and and ai driven kind of conversational chatbots in a way if you like so just in terms of closing, um, if you reach out to me on LinkedIn, I do have a, uh, a, a freebie that we created called Cracking the Code to COVID. Um, and if you'd like me to send you a free copy, just uh, just hit me up on, on LinkedIn or email at the end, I'll give you that. Um, and it's just a guide for you in your business if, uh, if you're struggling through, well, how, what does COVID mean now? How has it changed? Um, then this is the little report that we produce that just sort of takes businesses through some of that new stuff to look at as we uh, sort of go through this crazy pandemic. But other than that, uh, a massive thanks from myself. Thank you for having me on. If you have any questions, I think uh, we'll be available for a forum after this uh, presentation. Uh, but I hope you've uh, you've enjoyed it. Some of my details can be found here. So uh, by all means, connect uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, Twitter is uh, at Tony Eads. Uh, my email address, uh, as you can see there, Tony at SortedStone.com. And if you'd like to uh, check us out on the website, see what exciting stuff we're doing at Sorted Stone, please visit our website at SortedStone.com. But from me, Tony, take care. I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thanks, Tony, and hope to see you soon. Last year, we all underwent a big transformation in business approach, and the way we engaged our customers using various mediums of marketing. To use the marketing mediums, we're ignored by the clients and agencies that some stood strong to the new normal. In the event industry, replacing stage with virtual platform has become a new norm and advantage for agencies and clients to win accolades from any part of the world. So here we are announcing the best customer engagement campaigns, creatives, and activities executed from April 2019 onwards using various mediums of marketing, B2B digital, mobile marketing, radio, television, print, PR, outdoor, events, etc. Before announcing the awards, we would like to thank the Global Jury for taking out the time to test the entries. The Global Jury for the awards were from Canada, Singapore, Malaysia, Sri Lanka, Iran, and from India.